let us talk about the developmental disturbance of structure of the teeth initially we will talk about the developmental disturbances of enamel formation followed by dentin formation before we go to the developmental disturbances we should have a brief idea about the different stages of tooth formation morphologically you have the bud cap and the bell stage the bell is divided into early bell and late bell stage during the late bell stage you have cells those are differentiated into ameloblasts by the ectoderm the odontoblasts in the endoderm and the dental sac cells give rise to cementoblasts so ameloblasts give rise to enamel by depositing some proteins like amelogenin ameloblastin amelotin tuftalin etc the dentin deposits protein which is mainly collagen type 1 and type 3 and the cementum also is deposited by cementoblasts with collagen as their patterns these collagen fibers may be a part of the periodontal ligament fibers or intrinsic fibers which are deposited by the cementoblasts themselves whatever be it the enamel undergoes mineralization to a much higher degree of 96 percent whereas dentin is only 70 percent mineralized and cementum is only 55 percent mineralized the dentin has two different types of mineralization pattern a linear mineralization pattern and a circumpulpal globular mineralization pattern we need to understand the basis of all of these to be able to identify the differences in the structure of the teeth whenever there is error in the metabolism of these proteins so if a cell involved is ameloblast you will have abnormal enamel cell involved is odontoblast you will have abnormality in dentin similarly for cementoblast in cementum these cells can be influenced not only by the genetic factors which are the X and the Y chromosomes mostly, but also by physiological changes of the functioning of the cells. Amyloblast is ectodermal in origin, odontoblast is ectomesenchymal in origin, that is neural crest in origin. So amyloblasts are influenced by anything that affects an epithelial growth and development. So let's have a look at the changes occurring in enamel, and we call it as enamel hypoplasia. In the first part, we will talk about the hereditary that is amylogenesis imperfecta and the environmental causes of enamel hypoplasia in the next part of the lecture we will talk about the dentin changes that you are seeing the environmental changes of enamel are mainly influenced by nutritional factors most of the vitamins vitamin a vitamin b and c are required for the maturation of the epithelium vitamin a especially helps differentiation of the epithelium so if an inner enamel epithelium is not able to be differentiated into amyloblast enamel will not be formed normally hence vitamin deficiencies will give rise to enamel hypoplasia similarly calcium metabolism is regulated by vitamin d the other factors include environmental factors like viruses some viruses like chickenpox measles are called as exanthematous diseases. These diseases produce papules and pustules on the skin called as exanthems. And these are dermatotropic viruses. They have attraction towards the skin. When these viruses are present in the circulation during the development of the tooth, the tooth formation will be affected. It can also occur if the mother is infected by chickenpox measles or any other dermatotropic virus these viruses will influence the development of the enamel the other organisms that influence are these spirochetes especially Treponema pallidum they produce changes in the epithelium and they give this characteristic notched incisor appearance so you will have the central lobe of the incisor which is abnormally formed giving rise to notching of the incisors since the incisal edge is narrower than the cervical portion the incisal appearance is called a screwdriver shaped incisors the patient will have typical appearances of the skin which are peeling out and associated with congenital syphilis and you will have keratosis of the cornea the molars have a typical appearance where you have proliferation of tubercles on the molars which are also called as mulberry molars 
moons molars or corneas molars along with the screwdriver shaped or notched incisors and the molars they are called as Hutchison's teeth. The incisor which usually has three lobes the central lobe disappears giving rise to notched shaped incisor or screwdriver shaped incisors. These irregular enamel surfaces which are arranged they form globules on the top. The crown is narrower than the cervical portion similar to that of the incisors hence the name corneas molars. Here you can see a whitish patch that you see on top of the tooth. This could be a localized condition of hypocalcemia which can be associated with vitamin deficiency, parathormone deficiency which both can lead to calcium levels less than 6 milligrams per 100 ml. The normal levels is 9 to 11 milligrams per 100 ml. So locally, if in one particular tooth, this kind of hypocalcified structure arises, the tooth will be weaker in that particular site. During birth, because of injury, during forceps delivery, there may be prominent neonatal lines that may be noted. The neonatal lines are usually seen in all the deciduous teeth and the permanent first molars. In case of RH incompatibility, where the mother produces antibodies against the child, you may have a condition called as erythroblastosis fetalis, where the enamel appears mottled. So let's have a look at the tooth formation. You have the dental lamina, which gives rise to a bud, cap, and later on a bell stage. At the advanced bell stage, you have the permanent tooth bud arising lingually. Sometimes, during the development of the permanent teeth, which is usually occurring in the lingual portion. So, when you look at this particular tooth, permanent counterpart sitting right under that. This tooth, when it is traumatized, the root of the deciduous teeth may penetrate and traumatize the permanent teeth underlying. This is called as Turner's teeth. It may also be associated with infection. The usual teeth affected are the maxillary and the mandibular central incisors because they undergo trauma easily followed by maxillary premolars because the deciduous teeth, deciduous molars are usually carious and gives rise to this kind of changes. Fluoride. We know that fluoride is very important for caries prevention because fluoride has an ability to convert hydroxyapatite crystals to fluorapatite crystals which make it harder. But the ingestion of these chemicals excessively can give rise to mottled appearance and these mottled appearances are because of damage to the amyloblasts which affect the calcification process. So fluoride levels more than one parts per million can be hazardous giving rise to environmental fluorosis. Fluorosis may be classified from a questionable type where you just see white spots to mild, moderate, severe or very severe type of fluorosis where you see corroded appearance of the teeth. So clinically, most of these environmental hypoplasia may look like a simple white spot on the tooth, may extend to white areas giving rise to severe conditions where you have pitting and corroded appearances. So in summary, the environmental factors include nutritional deficiency, exanthematic diseases, congenital syphilis, hypocalcemia, birth injury, local infection or trauma, ingestion of the chemicals like fluorides and sometimes of course idiopathic causes. In the next part, we will continue about amylogenesis imperfecta, which is the hereditary variation of enamel hypoplasia.